Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be honest with you, um, this is the only gig that I've ever done in my life that will convince my parents I've got a career. So, <laughs> you've got to pretend you know who I am. I'm coming back on, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the world-famous comedian, it's Greg Davis! <laughs> Welcome, thank you so much. So, something about myself, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you, first of all, I'm a very tall man. Uh, six foot eight, I'm not showing off. I am a freak of nature. And it is a useless commodity, ladies and gentlemen. Useless. The only place it's ever been any use to me whatsoever was I did some gigs in uh, Bangkok recently. <laughs> Have you been to Bangkok? I love it there, because in Bangkok, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a novelty tall man. In Bangkok, I am a genuine fairy tale giant. <laughs> I was walking through that city, scooping them up under my arms. Come on, my little friends! <laughs> I've always been long. I'll do a picture for you. Do a picture from my childhood of baby Greg. Do you want to see that? Yes. There's the pram. There's the little wheels, look. There's little baby Greg smiling away. Say hello, baby Greg. Here's his legs. Here's his arms, look. It looked like someone had tried to sellotape a spider monkey into an egg cup. You want to see my family album, ladies and gentlemen. Half child, half Mr. Tickle. It's humiliating. And I'll be honest with you, um, it made me really self-conscious, right? And when I was at school, I was really worried about going in and getting bullied and getting picked on because I was, you know, a bit unusual size. And my mum said this to me. She said, you listen to me, Greg Davis. The bullies, yeah, they can take your sweets. They can take your pocket money. They can take your clothes. Strange one, though. <laughs> but I'll tell you what they can't take off you, Greg. They can't take your name. No one can take that, love. We gave you that proud name. No one will ever take Greg Davis off you. Not once was I referred to as Greg. These are just a selection. Two boys I quite liked. And I got off quite lightly. Just feast your eyes on these. Sorry about the flip chart. I used to be a teacher. <laughs> Genuine nicknames. Ready? This is to prove that children don't need a reason to give you a nickname. Bad Back Brown, boy in my year, Alan Brown, right? He was called Bad Back for five full years because on one day he had a bad back. It wasn't a reoccurring injury. He came in one day and went, I've got a bit of a bad back today, lads. We went, right, well, that's you ruined for five years. Lovely. Polly, slightly more sinister, he had a nasty burn down one of his arms. It would appear on that occasion, Polly put the kettle on his arm, so that's nice. <laughs> Sue, nice short one, this. He was a boy called Kevin, he had long hair. Lovely. <laughs> this is a work of genius, Baghdad. I still know this man. He's 43 years of age, he's a father of three children. He is still called Baghdad. And you're probably thinking, well, presumably, Greg, there was some clever connection with the Middle East, was there? That's why he was called Baghdad all those years. No. He was called Baghdad from the first summer of school onwards because he came in with a new bag <laughs> that he informed us had been bought for him <laughs> by his dad. <laughs> 30 years I've been laughing at that. 30 years and here's the best bit is kids call him Baghdad. <laughs> I've been on tour all year, ladies and gentlemen, everybody. These are people from my audience, these are my favourite two over the last year, right? This was a wonderfully camp man in the front row of my audience, and he said he had a nickname, and I went, what was your nickname, young man? And he said, oh, it still is, it's uh, Gandhi. And I went, oh, okay, or well, why are you called Gandhi? This is what he said. He went, oh, because I'm gay and my name's Andy, and they just... This is the greatest nickname of all time. Quite an arrogant claim, that, isn't it? Mumbo. And the reason I like it is he was 45 years of age. His friends were nudging him, going, tell him yours. Tell him your nickname. Tell him yours. He was going, get lost. Get lost. And I went, come on, mate. Tell me. 
You were at school. It's, it's a long time ago. And he went, all right. My name was Mumbo, all right. And I went, okay, well, why were you called Mumbo? And this is how he said it. He went, well, because apparently my mum's got B.O. <laughs> Imagine that! Not even something he'd done! He just said a smelly mum! <laughs> For years, I was a drama teacher, right? For years, 13 years, I was a drama teacher. I used to teach the most picked-on girl in the world. She was my favourite ever pupil. Her name was Karen Powell. She was 11 years of age. She was this tall. She had two fascinating characteristics that the kids used to bait her with. Number one, even though she was 11, she spoke like a repressed 1940s housewife. <laughs> I don't know why. I'll come on to that. Number two, she had no sense of direction. She was 10 minutes late to every single lesson, right? Her internal compass was just messed up for some reason. Um, they called her Satnav, right? <laughs> this is the conversation I had with Satnav one day. She came to see me after a lesson. You'll think I'm exaggerating this impression. I'm not. She came in, 11 years of age. She went, Excuse me, sir. Could I have a word with you, please? <laughs> I, went, I used to bite through my lip trying not to laugh. I went, of course, Karen. Of course you can. What's wrong? She goes, I just wanted to say something to you. Um, I thought my performance in your lesson today was a little below par. <laughs> so, 11 years of age. I said, really? I thought you were excellent. She goes, well, that's very kind, too kind. No, I thought my characterisation was paper thin, my use of space was appalling, and my group work was an abomination. And if you'll forgive me, I'd like to offer you my most humble of apologies. <laughs> I said, you listen to me, Count Powell. You never need to apologise to me, young lady. You are my favourite pupil. Because you make me laugh my head off. <laughs> now go outside and enjoy your lunchtime. You've deserved it. She said, you know what, sir, I think I will. I turned around at that point to do a little bit of admin. Karen was then faced with a challenge. She could leave my drama studio via the only exit. <laughs> or she could go into my stock cupboard. <laughs> I don't know what happened because I had my back. Back turned, but I certainly, before I went for my lunch, I locked my stock cupboard. <laughs> then I went away for a whole hour. I swear to you, when I came back after lunch, I opened my cupboard. That little girl was standing there, stationary, with her back to me, shaking like this. I was horrified. Right? I thought I was going to get sacked. I went, Karen! This is what she did. Hello, sir! <laughs> I said, have you been in there for a whole hour? She said, I'm rather afraid I have. <laughs> I'm so sorry, she said, don't you apologise to me. I've only got myself to blame. I'll see you later. 